Hi, everybody. Tim Hughes here. I'm the CEO and co-founder of DLA Ignite. Today, I've got Lauren Barton with me, um, and we're going to talk about the power of sharing your story. Um, I'm really excited about this, uh, Lauren. It's, it's really great to get you on. Um, before we start, I always ask the question, where can people get hold of you? Yes, sir. Um, so my name is Laron Barton. You can find me at www.laronbarton.com. You can also find me on LinkedIn, Laron L. Barton. You can find me on Facebook. I have a professional writing page, facebook.com for slash Laron L. Barton. You can also find me on Twitter at Mainline Laron and Instagram.com for slash Laron L. Barton. It's just you know, pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just and and, and you, I mean, and you're you, you're pretty supersonic on um, on social. I mean, you know, it's just fantastic the way that you you run your profile. Thank um, you, man. Appreciate hey, it. no, you're welcome. Um, so uh, you know, so so how did we get here? You know, what's your, you know, what how how do we get to the point where where we're talking to each other? So, you know, you know, what's your story, Lara? Sure. Uh, well, you know, I'm I'm uh, you know. Young black male from uh, Southside, Kansas City, Missouri. Um, I'm, I'm a writer. Um, I'm an uh, I'm I'm an author and I'm a public speaker. I'm an author of two books: Straight Dope, a 360 degree look into American drug culture, as well as All We Really Need Is Love: Stories of Dating, Relationships, Heartbreak, and Marriage. Um, I write essays primarily about race, mass incarceration, politics, business, tech, um, dating, as well as I you know I talk about um, you know my my uh, my disability, which is a, which is a stutter. I've been published in Salon, Harvard Business Review, uh, Your Tango, Ravishly, uh, Mail Magazine, um, East Bay Express. You know, and and I'm, I've also given uh, three uh, three TEDx talks. So That's you know, it's evening. yeah, man. You know, you know, I mean, it's a lot of it's a lot of stuff. But uh, but you know, I'm, I'm just really blessed to be here, man. Like, um, thank you for giving me this this platform. No, you're so, welcome. And, and, and I love the. I mean, I, I mean, I love. I, I, I like getting interesting people on here to talk. And one of the things that I, you know, you've got a great profile yes, on LinkedIn, but, but the thing is, is that you're also, um, you're not afraid to talk about the real um, um, you. Um, you not know, at all. Um, and um, I noticed on your um, your profile that you were talking about race, um, and. Yes, sir. Um, and 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 I think that's imp it's important that we have the debate, not just you know, Black Lives Matter comes and goes, but we need to keep sure, we, need, we, we need to be keeping we need to be keeping race as part of the conversation. I'm a white privileged person, you know, and sure. and um, um, you could probably guess that, um, and we need Love to it. be we need to be we need to be we need to be talking about this. A hundred percent. I, uh, I totally agree. Like, I, I, I don't understand why people are so hesitant or, you know, just so reluctant to talk about race because it, it pretty much shit. It's the single greatest, uh, signifier of our, of our lives. In my opinion, you know, I, I think that it, it, it shapes our life more than, more than anything. I mean, it's definitely shaped my life. It's definitely made it's, it's, um, put my life into a perspective that you know uh it's made me realize like things that i can do th things that may be a little a little tough you know the the barriers the the obstacles how i am viewed um you know how we got here you know what i mean so i think that it's important like whenever we talk about you know specific like i so i can't speak for any for for, for anybody else i i, I can only speak for I can only speak for black people be, because, you know, that's what I am, Tim. But, um, you know, whenever we whenever we talk about, you know, the you know, the black experience, you know, uh, you know, racism has to be in the forefront because it's shaped the black experience. And so um, why people have have difficulty talking about race like I just I don't you know, I don't know, man. I, I just me personally, Tim, I, I think it's it's cowardly. And, you know, people don't people don't want to be wrong, but. When you're wrong, then you can race to be right. It's it's like uh what like um one of my favorite sports sports talk uh, com commentator personalities uh, Colin Colin Cowherd he he once said to him he said you know people w would rather be right than get it right, and it's like you know for me like I have no problem being 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 wrong because I you know like my friend David Chastain said the uh, the thing about life is uh is it, it's being it's being wrong all all the yes. time so. 
you know, when you're wrong, you know, you can learn and then get to be right. That's great counsel, actually, Leron. That's 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 fantastic advice. Um, and so, so why is it? I mean, you you have so so you know you have a great story. Why is it that you're telling your story? You know, um, as a writer, as someone who is uh, who has always been curious, someone who someone who loves to ask questions, I always felt that um, that the 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 landscape, um, you know, who we are, um, you know, the narrative uh, per se, as has 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 always been has always been slanted per towards a sort of a a uh, middle class, uh, middle middle class white person. Um, mm -hmm. I'm neither. You know, I mean, I'm. I you know, I grew up poor. I'm black. I uh, was grew up. You know, raised by us a, a, a single mom. You know, my younger brother's my best friend, and um, I feel like that our story is not told or it's not told accurately. You know, it's a lot of a lot of caricatures, a lot of stereotypes, and so um, my story is very multi is very multifaceted. So I believe tim that everyone deserves to be heard because when we have different kind of narratives out out there right um that allows us to learn that allows the world to be you know multi you know multi multifaceted you know like one of my favorite people of all times guy by the name of, of combat jack you know like rest in peace he, uh, he, he had a podcast called the combat jack show and and he once said the universe flows in technicolor so I took that to believe that there's just like so many different kinds of stories to tell and so many different kinds of stories to be heard. And so that's how we, that, that's how we learn. Like we, we will learn better from a story than from a fact. I mean, mm -hmm. and you know, you know, you have the stories and you have the data, but it's what one of them is going to affect you personally and probably change the way that you view things. And so that's what I think is so great about storytelling. And And do you think that, um, when we learn about people and we learn about their stories, we become more tolerant and therefore society becomes better. 100%. 100%. Um, I'll, give you a, I'll give you a great example. Um, I So when I was younger, I, I wouldn't call myself a, a, a virulent homophobe, but I didn't have a lot of, I, I, I didn't, I did not have, I said some negative things about gay folks back in the day, right? And it's funny, it's like when I left Kansas City, moved, moved to San Diego, started hanging around uh, people of the LGBTQ uh, com community, yeah. started learning about them. You know, I became not only tolerant, then I became accepting, then I started to embrace. So, th so that's the thing, tolerant, acceptance, em uh, em embracing them. And, and now, like, you know, two of my, you know, two of my, well, I, well actually, three of my best guy, guy friends are gay. And I think that if it wasn't for like learning about them, listening to their stories, how they um, how they grew up, how they lived, you know, it it affected me in a way. And it made me realize that, you know, I, I can't be a great person if I'm a bigot, you know. So uh, so, I mean, yeah, you know, that's uh, th uh, that that's how stories can uh, can can affect you in, in a very positive way. Yeah, I obviously pre COVID, but I I've traveled a lot. Um, mm -hmm. And one of the things that I've learned is that actually meeting people is a fantastic thing because you actually find that people are generally quite similar. Um, but also what you do is you find that, um, that 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 enables you to when you approach people, you approach people expecting the best side um, and, and expecting the best from people. Um, and I think that that's something that you always right. need to do. And, and, you know, regardless of of. Um, uh, what part of the community they come from, you need to embrace people. Absolutely. 100%, man. Like, you know, it's, uh, it's like this, uh, it's like this, Tim, like, I don't understand, um, two, I don't understand the two spirit move, uh, movement. I don't understand why, why someone would claim two genders. However, just because I don't understand it, that doesn't mean that they should deny a life. without strife a, a life if someone would live that way that doesn't mean that we have to judge them you know uh, you know what we should do is give them space to truly be who they are so, so I, I know that a lot of people that I talk to um, 
I mean, my partner says this, no one wants to hear what she has to say or what her story is or no one's interested in her. And I and I say that's quite not the case. That's definitely um, not because the case. It, because if you look at magazines, it, I mean, magazines, though, they're dying out. If you go into into a news agent, the magazines that are for sale are about people, about other people. They may be celebrities, right. but actually people want to hear about people. We love hearing about people. Would you Absolutely. Is that something you agree with? 100 percent, man. Um, you know, I, I think one of the biggest failings that we have in the public dis discourse when it comes to um you know, learning about different, learning about different people. And, and as far as, you know, I guess storytelling, you know, sharing, you know, sharing your experiences is that people believe that just because that, that they may not be famous or that they have not accomplished something that they're not worthy. And, and, and I think that's so correct. That's one of the reasons why that the narrative is, is so, is so linear because only a specific type of person is able for their story to be told. And, and I think that everyone has something to offer. You know, look, I'm, you know, black guy from Southside, Kansas City. I have a stutter. I'm a, I'm a writer. And yet, you know, I inspire people. Like, I think everybody in, in, everybody can inspire, right? And you just have to just know that someone's going to get something out of your story. You're going to get something out of putting your story out there. You know, it, 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 it may not reach a thousand people. It may not reach a million just gazillion folks right but it could reach one it, but it, it could reach one person and it and it could also let you know that hey you know what um i deserve to be heard why do i not have a platform like you know like i i i think that no matter the point of view um, i mean I, I think that everyone should be everyone should be allowed to tell their story now it could be repugnant it it, it could be it, it could be horrible you may have the right to tell your story and you know, which I which I do believe in him, but but also I have the right to turn it down or to or to re, or to reject it. But that's my but that's my choice. There's mm -hmm. an audience for everything. Look, there's over seven hundred fifty thousand podcasts out there, right? I mean, there's just and there's I'm like, and I think that is one of the best examples of why of why everyone needs to tell the story because trust me, like there's a podcast for you if you were. If you have an interest in something, no matter how minute, no matter how niche, it's going, you're going to be able to fulfill that. And if you don't hear that, if you don't find that, uh, find that story, find that platform, then it is up to you to um, to create that. You know, uh, the great Tony, exactly. You know, like you know, like the great Tony Morrison once 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 said, if if there's a book that you want to read, but and it hasn't been written yet, then you must write it. So, so I'm um, some you tell you like why not? So, so if if um, if there's people watching this and they have no platform or are they, and and they want to, what's your advice in terms of because because quite often um, sure. we 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 see ourselves and actually people see ourselves right up here, um, and though we still see ourselves right down here, actually sure. other people. That's so so, how, true, how, so so entry level, what would I need to do to 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 get and out and tell my story? Well, um, you know, there, there's so first off, there's many different ways to do it. Right. So but even before that, Tim, we have we have to figure out what do you want to say? You know, um, so, again, going, going, going back to what I said earlier, we're 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 multifaceted folk. So there's so there's so many different things about about Tim. You're like, you know, you're just not a uh, a host of a host of a broadcast, you know, you know, you, you know, you're a partner, you're, uh, you're a son, you're, uh, you're a friend, you're, you're so many different, so many different other, uh, other things. So first off, we have to decide what do you want to focus on, right? After you decide what you want to focus on, then what, what medium do you want to do? Do you want to do writing? Do you, uh, do you want to do speaking? Do you want to do movies, music, et, et, et cetera, et cetera. And the great thing about the internet you know what we are on now is that there's so many different avenues there's so many different free avenues I'm, i mean you know there's you know there's blogger there's there's medium um there's youtube you know you can create a podcast for free i i, I mean you know at, at this point look there's there are there are these things called called phones that <laughs> that you, you can make movies on so at this point there's really no there, there's no excuse there's no, there's nothing preventing you from getting yourself out there, but you, and you have to decide 
you, you know what? I'm I'm just gonna put myself out there. And and believe me, Tim, that is the biggest hurdle. Saying that, you know what? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put myself out there. And you know what? You're gonna be criticized. Listen, that's that's a part of the game. Like you yeah. you can't you can't go through something like this unscathed. And when you and when you do this, and I want people to really listen to what I'm to, to what I'm gonna say. When you put yourself out there, when when you publish yourself, when when you create a video, just post something on, on the internet, on, on on social media, et cetera, et cetera. You're you're going to be criticized. But you know what? At some point, after you face so much criticism, it's it's not gonna matter. And you're just gonna be like, all right, well, you know, well, you know, you know, whatever. You know, going back to my friend David, he always said, Laurent, don't read the comments. Don't don't read them. Who 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 cares? Yeah, oh, like I mean, like I, I've been called so much, I've been called so many nasty names. I've I've been just you know, people have thumbed down my videos, like just you know, people have people have sent me nasty grams. I, I don't care. I'm I'm going to move forward. So again, the biggest hurdle is you. Yeah. So I'm I'm in the process at the moment of of getting myself fit again. So I'm 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 restarting right. running. Um on, and man. um Th thank you. Um, but the, uh, the the problem isn't running. Um, the problem is getting up in the morning. Hell yeah! Uh, right. uh, and and the uh, and, and that's and I think I think that, that that's the cognizant bias that um, that um, that we quite often have is that we think the problem is um, is actually doing the speaking or the writing or that. Actually, we can probably do that. The uh, the thing that's stopping us is the little um, voice in our head saying, "Don't do it. You're not good enough. Um, Absolutely. Everyone, everyone's going to laugh at you, or whatever." Right. You know, so, look. So what? Look. You know. So what? If 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 they laugh at you, you know. Look. Being an artist, being a writer, being a speaker, you have to be prepared for rejection. Rejection come. Rejection comes with it. So um. So you know, I'll tell you a story. Um. Please. I was um when I did a speaking engagement at this church called uh, called Glad Memorial. It's in San Francisco. It's a world famous church, right? And so I got up there and and I was giving a speech on race and I started stuttering and I stuttered so bad I just I couldn't like I was like uh, I, I could not get the words out of my mouth and so I got off the stage. <laughs> And uh, and uh, and my man Michael Spearhead, you know, is a famous famous musician. He said, "Good job." <laughs> it's like, <laughs> and it was horrible, right? So, so you know, at first I was like, you know what, you know, Laurent, maybe maybe speaking is just not in is just not in your future. You know, maybe it's not the move for you. But I realized I'm like, I'm not a quitter. I'm not gonna let something like that stop me. So I practice. I practice. Look here. Look here's the thing. A lot of people want to be great from the jump, right? Like you can't yeah. you, you can't jump off the porch and just and just and just be great at something. Like it takes time, it takes practice, it takes failing. Like the great late, I'm sorry, the late great Kobe Bryant one, uh, once said he found failure fascinating. The reason why that he said that is because when it is is because when he failed. He would uh, he would do what what I like to call like a a post mortem. Uh, it's a it's a term. What 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 it essentially means is, is is looking at everything that just that that just happened. So Kobe would uh, Kobe would look at what what he did well, what he didn't do well, what he could improve on. He would assess that, implement like you know, and then at the next go around, implement the changes. And the and the thing is, is like, you know, you just have to just you 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 have to be afraid of failure. You know, if you're doing a video series, whatever, you know, you've got to be used to people just, you know, like not maybe like tuning in. Look, I've done three TEDx's. Right. So yeah. my first TEDx has gotten over one hundred sixty thousand views. Right. My yeah. second TEDx came out last month. I think it's a little under five hundred views. I'm not I'm not deterred by that. It's just, that you know, I'm you know, I'm going to have to promote it. But see, that's the thing. It's like you have to work it. Like you, you, you know, you can't just be great from the beginning. Because if you're great from the beginning, then truthfully, you don't really have anything to to aspire to. I mean, you know, you're you know, you're just you're you know, you're done. And I and I love the saying, Tim. It's like if if you did something 
great the first time, it wasn't hard enough. Yeah. So challenge your challenge your challenge yourself and don't be afraid to fail. I fail all the time, but but you know what? I keep going. And so that's why I never really failed. Yeah. And I and I think it's, you know, the um the social media influencer Gary V, I think he'd done, was it two thousand podcasts or something, uh, before someone started started saying he was an overnight sensation. Um so right. mm. bro, uh, um um bro, listen like so the most popular podcast is uh is Joe Rogan's is, is Joe Rogan ex, ex, experience right? I was looking at I was looking at Joe Joe Rogan's podcast. It's uh yesterday. It's not really my cup of tea, but you know Joe Rogan's a very smart guy. Joe Rogan said that it took him six years of doing it for free before he started making money. Think about that six years. So so that means again you have to put in the work. There's no such thing as as and as an as an overnight sen uh, sen sensation. You think that person popped up on the scene, but you can see all the work that that person put in. You know, um, one of my favorite basketball players, uh, Derrick Rose, he once said, "Social media makes people impatient," and I think that you know we live in a society, Tim, where everyone wants instant gratification, and the world just the world just doesn't work like work like that. Like you know, like even the Kardashians, like. <laughs> I mean, Kim Kardashian was an assistant to Paris Hilton. I'm, 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 yeah. I mean, you know, I don't, I mean, you know, I don't want to tell you, like, yeah, like that's the best example possible. That woman is almost a billionaire, and she was an assistant to Paris Hilton, and now she's, you know, she's ubiquitous. So, yeah, there, there it is. So, Laurent, we, we just come up to twenty minutes, so the time's up. Is there anything else that you want to share with people? Sure. Um, I would just say to everybody, um, you know, believe in yourself, you know, keep, in, you know, keep grinding, keep going. There is an audience for your story. Don't believe that, that, that just because, you know, you're not, you know, you're not, you're not white, you're not a woman, you're not straight, you're not, uh, you're not rich, that no one wants to hear what, hear what you have to say. We need stories from all different walks of walks of life, because that's what makes life rich. That's what makes life, um, worth learning about work i mean there's so there's so many different uh people out out there and i guarantee you someone wants to hear your story and see not only are you helping your not only are you helping helping yourself but you're helping other people because while representation isn't the isn't the whole enchilada it's not the whole thing it's something and it's something to be said when you hear and see someone that is came from an environment like you and that is powerful man and that yeah. inspires people so just know that when you tell your story you're not only telling it for yourself but you're telling it for other folks man. yeah yeah i totally agree that's fantastic i really appreciate that that's a great way to end actually thank you thank you thank you so much Laurent. it's been really insightful and i really appreciate you spending uh 20 minutes uh, with us today sharing your, yeah, your thoughts and your expertise now uh, listen my man we could have went we could have went another another 20. uh i think but it's like yeah, yeah listen like um everybody check out my TED you actually but uh, yeah okay yeah <laughs> yeah no like um tedx wilson park 2018 2020 they're on youtube they're also on ted.com so i made it on ted ted.com that's that, that's a whole nother thing um uh, and and uh, and tedx uh tedx farmingdale will will be coming out soon i cannot wait for 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 everyone uh to see to see that one so tim thank you so much man much you're love welcome and great to meet you thank you Laron. thank you for today i really appreciate it got it thanks for your insight cheers Laron. bye <laughs>